So the 2024 Players Handbook is here, and come hell or high water, it's here to stay. And with a new Players Handbook comes a new way of making your character. New-ish, uh, I should say. Now, they haven't completely gone away with the, the old ways of doing it. They've just kind of tweaked some things. So let's go ahead and go over that. Step one's still the same as it's been in any generation, which is choose a class. You have all the same classes as the 2014 Player's Handbook. No additions. It's saddening, it's disheartening, but it is what it is, right? Maybe with the, the Dungeon Master's Guide coming out in November, we'll be able to bring the Artificer class back. Fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Anyway, you pick your class and then you move on. This is where things are gonna go a little bit different because ordinarily the secondary option is going to pick your race, which is now called species for those of you who haven't thumbed through the player's handbook yet. Um, because your species used to decide where your ability score improvement at level one went. It no longer does. So step two is now determine your origin. This is going to be your backstory and your species. But really the backstory is going to be the, the most important one. Um, it's going to decide, one, what your level one feat is, and two, what your ability score improvement is. So they've made it so that your backstory origins, you know, hermit, acolyte, stuff like that, is going to decide where you can put your additional ability scores. So every every single one has three ability scores tied to it. And what you can do is you can either put two into one of them and then one into another one, or you can put one into all three. I know it's, it's like Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, but worse, I guess. Um, and I understand why they did this. I don't agree with it, don't get me wrong. Um, I've had many conversations with people uh, about this, um, and I, I don't agree with the, them doing it this way, but I understand why they did. Um, this is, at its core, a role-playing game, and they want people to role-play. And the backstory was some of the most underused portions of the, 2020, the 2014 excuse me, Player's Handbook. I always put emphasis on it. I always made sure that people were doing it. Um, background. I'm sorry. I've been saying backstory. Background. Um, I always put emphasis on it because it always gave you more stuff. Uh, it gave you more proficiencies, more languages. Um, but that wasn't good enough for people. I knew. I know a lot of people who refused to pick a background and, you know, hey, fair, more power to them. You can't refuse anymore. It's now a requirement. You have to. Um, and they, you want to because it's going to give you an ability score improvement and it's going to give you a feat. Each background has one feat tied to it and you get that feat at level one, um, which is cool, I guess. I guess. Once again, they just took Tasha's Collagen of Everything and just made it a little bit worse. I get why they did it, but I disagree with it. And then species. Now, is it, I said that species isn't as important. Um, because the, the ability score improvement isn't there anymore. And I'll stand by that. It's not as important as it was in 2014 because the 2014 Player's Handbook decided where your ability score improvement was going. And that was important all the way up until Tasha's College and everything came out. And even then it continued being important because not a lot of people played with Tasha's rules because not a lot of people had the Tasha's book. Um, it's still important. It's just now it's more of important from a role play aspect, kind of in the same way that backgrounds were important on the 2014 Player's Handbook. Like it gave you stuff, but could you live without it? Sure. Um, now each individual race, there's more to what you get as that species. Um, there's more subspecies. I don't. They did away with the the half half races because they don't they don't want halves, but then they. There's the subspecies that they're calling subspecies. I, I don't know. Uh, they want to be politically correct. They don't want to be politically correct. I don't understand this one. Um, they did. I understand that they didn't want to be attacked by the woke mob and for not being politically correct with half orc or half elf. I, I kind of get that. I kind of. But 
they took one step forward and like three giant steps back by having subspecies, you know, like, oh, you're a tiefling, but now there's three different types of tieflings. Um, I don't know. I don't get it. But, but each species has a set thing. And like going with the tiefling, you can pick a tiefling and there's three different types of tieflings and each different type gets something different at various levels. Um, so it's still important, but it doesn't feel as important. Um, if that makes sense. However, if you want a secondary feat at level one, go human. They're still coddled like that, I guess, I suppose. I, I don't know. Um, and then step three, you determine your ability score. Now, there's still three ways to do this according to the player's handbook. There's the uh, standard array, which I hate. Uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I hate standard array. But I don't hate it anywhere near as much as I hate point by there's the point by I don't I can't fathom any moment in time where anyone goes oh point by that's a great idea you tell me otherwise and comment below that's fine um, I think point by is absolutely atrocious and then they tweaked the um, random ability score gain the it used to be you would roll three dice and you know add those three numbers together and that's and you do that five times you still kind of do the same thing, except they made it better. They did what, what most people do when they use that, which is you roll four dice, take the lowest number, and then add the three big numbers together, and you do that five times. I think this is better because you're less likely to get, like, a three. You know, ability score three. Oof. Um, don't get me started on that nonsense. You're, yeah, you're more likely to also to get, like, an 18. Um, you know, three sixes. But, you know, you got to take the bad with the good. So, and that could be good depending on how you personally look at it. I like having you know, my players be overpowered because they, I sat there and watched them roll three 18s in a row when, when getting their ability scores. It means I can throw stronger enemies at them. But to each their own. Uh, and then choose alignment. You can actually just, there's, there's a guideline to just choose your alignment uh, there's also a guideline for rolling for your alignment, um, which the, the guide for rolling your alignment is the same as it was in the 2014 player's handbook. So this is not a huge change there. Um, however, it doesn't really, it really harps on you wanting to choose your alignment at when making your character. And I guess that makes sense because you got to think you're adventuring, by now, your character's probably of adult age, has done enough things in life that they would have some form of sway. They wouldn't be dead center, neutral, neutral on the alignment sheet anymore. But I still prefer the, your alignment comes from actions throughout the campaign. Um, I think that's more fun, personally. Um... I know some people disagree with me, but if you're starting at level one or level three or anywhere in between, so two, um, I would even argue somewhat up to level five, you could get away with neutral, neutral starting the campaign. Um, I personally start my campaigns at one um, and they just don't start together. I, it's, I'm weird, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then the final step is fill in details. And that's going to be like your actual backstory, like your, your origins. Where, where did you grow up? What's your family life like? Um, are you Batman, right? It's that kind of nonsense. All that fun stuff, describing your character, what your character looks like, you know, all of that fun stuff, that's going to be the fill in the details. And that one, they put that at step five because it's not really important, right? You know what your character looks like. It's your character. It's your imagination. If you want to write that down or... I guarantee you, your DM will love you if you draw your character. I can't draw for shit. But I love it when my players bring a picture to the table. Look, this is what my character looks like. Fucking great. Right? Love it. Love to see it. It makes it a lot easier to imagine it. Um, but that's not necessary. It's not. And it's not even necessary for you to write down what your character looks like. Um... The, the first time my party, you know, the players meet each other in game, I, I tend to ask them to describe themselves anyway. Um, but it's, 
a lot of this fill in the details thing isn't necessary. It's for role play purposes. So it's fun. It's designed to help get you into this character, you know, um, another, another, there are some parts in the fill in the details that is important. Like, um, the proficiencies, which you'll be doing when making your class, but picking which proficiencies you get, um, what languages, you know, stuff like that, that's falls under fill in the details. So it is still kind of important. But the bulk of step five isn't important. I still heavily recommend doing it. It'll help you um, feel more in tune to the character you just made. Because if this is going to be a long campaign, it's, you want it to be a character that you um, enjoyed making. And you, that you're going to enjoy playing. And that's why I think step five is important. But as far as making a character goes, it's not important. If you're one of those DMs that goes and makes like eight character sheets for their players and then hands them out so the players have pre-made characters and they just get to pick. That's not important at all. You don't you don't you don't need step 5 for that, right? Uh, I would still argue that you don't really need step 4. Step 4 can be tossed out in general because I still feel like you should be making your alignment with decisions you make. Start off neutral neutral and whatever decision you make, that's going to affect your alignment, right? But once again, I'm weird. But those are the, the, the nuances of, of making a character in, in the 2024 Player's Handbook. It's a little bit different, still mostly the same, um, but it's different enough, I suppose. The biggest difference is going to be the ability score improvement, where it comes from, and the feat, which is going to be whatever background you pick. So you're going to want to be paying a lot more attention to the backgrounds, which they go a lot more in depth in backgrounds in this book. And it's wonderful. One of the good things about this book, to be honest, there's a lot of bad things in the 2024 handbook. Um, no matter what side of the fence you sit on, I'm sure a lot of people have negative things to say about it. A lot of people have positive things to say about it. I'm kind of a fence sitter on this one. I've got negative things to say and positive things to say. The backgrounds, the improvements they did to the backgrounds is one of the things that I think is fantastic. Not the ability score uh, or the, the feat being decided by your background, just the extra work they put into the backgrounds and everything that they do. Um, but that's how you make a character in 2024. Some nonsense, uh, slightly different order, ending in, do in nonsense. Um, <laughs> As soon as I get some character sheets, I will make some characters um, for you guys. So go ahead and in the comments below, tell me what class and subclass character you, may, you want me to make. Because I'm going to be making a, a handful of level 5 characters. Either live stream or I'll do a video of it because um, it's easier to edit that way. You can decide in the comments below. Just let me know what you want me to make and I will hop right on that as soon as I get the, the new, way more beautiful... Uh, character sheets because these are these are great if I can find them I don't know where they went I'll throw it on screen I'll throw it on screen in editing but they, they are so thanks for watching